So, first of all, I want to welcome you to the show. Thank you. And I think that tonight's subject is a really important subject. And Absolutely. You know, we've been trying to get you on the show for quite some time. I want to give a big shout out to Giovanni Alvarez, who made the arrangement to get you on here. And He got me. No, he got you. He got you here. And the thing that excites me about you being here is that you have a business that's here in the city of Bridgeport. There's not too many businesses like the one you have here in the city. So yours is unique. It's called Project Pardon LLC. Yes. Basically changing lives. Working on it. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that there's been, I mean, I'm sure that from the amount of people who apply for a pardon, you have a, a great success record. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. hundred percent to date. So you're not trying then. You, you're doing it. You're we're making it happen. It, we're doing it. Yeah, you're making it happen. So really quick, what I want you to do is I just want to give a, uh, I want you to give a brief introduction to the viewing audience um, all about yourself. Okay. Who is Miss, and not Michelle, Lisa Crespo Gero? Okay, Go so I'm from the city of Bridgeport. I'm raised, born and raised here all my life. Um, you know, I raised my family here. I remained here. Um, it's just an important city to me. But I spent over 22 years at the state of Connecticut judicial branch where I was a probation officer initially in Har New Haven, Harvard, Bridgeport, wow. some work in the Valley. And then for my last 11 years, I served as a chief probation officer in Milford and West Haven. Wow, that's awesome. So, yeah. you know, um, she ain't just anybody. She was out there doing big woolly stuff. She was a the chief. Something. She was the chief. <laughs> Not too many Latinas. No, and that and that's and that's pretty impressive. And when I, and as I'm listening to you speak, uh, it reminds me of our good friend Inez Nieves. Who's, I love Inez. Who, yeah, who's yes. a chief? Who? Well, did she retire yet, or she's still chief? She's retired. Oh, she is retired. Yeah. Well, that's right. But she I just think retired she's a few dibbling, months ago. Dabbling in, in the branch still, but really, well, I she's doing like some. Um, some uh I don't know, but she's amazing at what she Yeah, does. no, no, definitely. Actually she was my chief when I was a judicial marshal at the courthouse in Bridgeport. Yeah. And um she, you know, she she gave me a lot of opportunities while I was there. But but I think that's pretty impressive that you come from that background. Um law enforcement, criminal justice. After being around that environment for so many years and dealing with offenders, and you know, sometimes it could burn you out. Sometimes it, it can frustrate you. And, and once you walk away from it, and I haven't retired myself yet, but once you walk away from it, it's like you never want to look back. But you did the opposite. You felt the call, the need to... To dive in. To dive into something even bigger and greater than what you walked out of. And that's helping men and women who you used to oversee and supervise. Some of them, actually. I wrote warrants for, served the warrants. Exactly. On, they came and found me. Yeah. So I have a couple of those. And now you help any type of individuals li to, to liberate themselves from from that hold of, you know, that criminal record that's been. Hold I mean, to mind. me, that's, that's it's bondage. You know, it's it's it is. You're not truly free, even though you're in a community, you're not 100 percent free with a criminal record. Very true. Because I know a lot of people. I have personal friends who they're they're very educated. They had, you know, bachelor's degree, master's degree. Um, they have all the tools and the instruments, but they don't, they're not able to go but so far because when they apply for a job, what's the first question? They talk about your criminal record. They want to know what, what your background is all about. Yeah. And when, once they see that, usually it turns them off and, and, and you know, right. you get that letter in the mail. Well, thank you for applying. Thank you, but no thank you. Yeah, thank you, but no thank you, unfortunately. And they really don't give you an explanation. They just... You know, we don't want you here. Right. So you're in the business of trying to help um, individuals get a pardon. Yes. So let's start there. First question is, what inspired you to start the pardon project? So Project Pardon LLC started mm -hmm. out actually as something I thought about doing when I was in my last couple of years of probation. Mm -hmm. um, I just remember so many people over the years coming in and saying well when does this come off my criminal record and you kind of cringe and you say never um you know so you know that these people had to live you know great people living with these things forever yep um and then i just felt like god calling you need to do something different you need to take the next step and where people thought about retiring 
I just felt called to continue and actually feel like probation was the sounding board and the preparation mm. for what I'm doing now, whether it's the way we're trained, whether it's the way we interview, prepare reports, help people, talk to people. All of it has definitely moved us forward and, and moved me in this direction. So from a Friday to a Monday morning, I decided to retire, finish my master's and open the door. Wow. And that's, and that's pretty awesome. You know, and I take my hat off to you for you. Um, all your efforts and it's, you know, your, your organization, um, Project Pardon is your baby. That is I my mean, baby. I mean, you take it you take it serious, and I know you that do. That is my you know? baby. Yeah. Even when I went to the BCYL, Bridgeport Caribe Youth Leaders um, Gala they just recently had, I'm looking through the, the brochure, and you took a whole page. Right? Community is important to me. So, I mean, you know, that right there tells me that that's your baby. You know, it, yeah. you're not putting a price on it. You didn't have to pay that amount of money to take that whole page in that in that brochure. But you're trying your best to get your word out there to let, you know, offenders know that, hey, we're here. And, and you know, we're, 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 we're here to help you. And the thing is, is that there's a lot of them who are out there. They don't know how to go about getting a pardon. They don't know what steps to take. You know, they go onto uh, to the website. They look at the instructions. And they get intimidated. They get turned off, and yeah. then they say to them, they'll, they'll say to themselves, "You know what? I'll come back to this at a later time." Or forget about it. Oh yeah, just forget it. They just forget about it, but yet there's help out there. Yeah. Right. There is. So, the name, Project Pardon. What's the significance of that name? Why did you come up with that name? I think it truly speaks to what we do. Um, I think it speaks to, you know, you you think about different things. Project. It's. It, it's a job that people come together and they have people who manage projects and pull together as a team to get the project done. Well, the pardon is our project, getting our community to a new place. That's where we are getting it done, you know? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. So, name. yeah, 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 no. And so, all right, so let's do this. I'm, I'm an offender. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an offender. <laughs> I need I need I need to get a pardon. Yes. I just heard about Lisa. I'm walking into your office, or I call, set up an appointment with you. Mm -hmm. I arrive at your establishment, which is located directly across the street from Bridgeport Police Department. Yeah. Um. I walk into your office. I have a criminal record that wraps around the whole block. Okay. I need your help. Um. What's the first thing you're gonna do? I'm gonna when sit I walk there. into your office. So we're gonna sit there and talk about a screening tool. That kind of determines whether or not you're eligible to apply for a pardon. Um, some of it has to do with timelines. So we're talking, you know, has it been three years since your misdemeanor conviction? Has it been five years since your last felony conviction? Are you currently on probation or parole? Um, you know, making sure that you meet all the criteria to apply. Mm -hmm. And from there, we start moving forward by collecting information. Um, there is a fingerprint business and actually that serves the community downstairs in our building mm -hmm. um they do pardon and employment stuff so we encourage you to go down get your fingerprints done we uh send up your uh, fingerprints to the state police get your official record and we really take a good hard dive into what's there wow you know is it necessary is that a lot of, a lot of people who i know who have criminal records they're always they're always telling me how they, they're, they're so eager to apply for a pardon. Mm -hmm. But, of course, like I said earlier, they don't know how to go about it. Yeah. And then, you know, one of the first questions they always ask is, do I need an attorney in order for me to do such a thing? I mean, so is that necessary? Do they need an attorney? So in the state of Connecticut, there's a variety of ways that you can do this. Mm -hmm. Some people um, feel like they have the skill set to do it themselves. Mm -hmm. And I don't discourage that at all mm -hmm. because some people have the skill set. They don't get frustrated. They have the time. But a lot of many people find it to be a complex um, process for them. So they also have attorneys that can do them. Mm -hmm. um, and many of them are well-respected, well-respected in the community, well-respected by me. I've worked with them for 22 years, mm. um, but it's not a requirement in the state of Connecticut. I come with a different skill set. Um, and that's how 
you know, it works out with the attorneys. I do have a network of attorneys that I work with. And some of them, um, you know, some clients may say, you know what, I feel comfortable with an attorney, but I like how, what you have to offer. So we'll connect with some of those local attorneys that I have connections yeah. with. So realistically, um, you can do it yourself. Yeah. If you want to do it yourself. But me personally, if it was me doing it, I would get some help. I would get I, someone who's informed, correct. someone who's educated in in what in the process in the process yeah. because I want to get I want to get mines. Right. You know, I don't I don't. It's like you know, I mean, I don't want I don't want to shoot blanks. I don't want to waste time. I want to make sure that I get it the first time around. And I know people who have applied multiple times, one, two, three, and haven't gotten it yet, and they get discouraged. You know what I've I mean? I've seen it. Yeah, yep. yeah. It's discouraging. It's like, damn. I mean. You know, and then after you get denied, I think you got to wait what a year or something. A like that? year to reapply, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So that's um, that's very discouraging. Right. Yeah. After I did all this hard work, I get denied, and I got to wait a year. Yes. And then I do it again, get denied, I got to wait another year. Yeah, I've seen somebody go five times. Five times. Five times. Five, five times was a charm. Five times was his charm. Wow, wow. So when it comes to the pardon process, what type of pardons are there? I, so it's an absolute in the state of Connecticut. The pardon is an absolute pardon, mm -hmm. meaning that the entire criminal record, um, anything that applies with these convictions gets completely erased. No tracking of it in the FBI, in the state police, probation, parole, Department of Corrections, at police departments. Like I said, everybody erases their record. So it looks like you were never arrested if it's granted. Mm. So. Clean, clean slate. Clean slate. Clean, clean, clean. So there's there's a full unconditional pardon, right? No. No? It's an absolute pardon. It's an absolute pardon. Absolute okay. pardon. Okay, that's what I'm asking. I'm, I'm learning as we go along. Yeah, absolute So there's an pardon. absolute pardon. And, an and then is there a partial? No. So no, it's just... Connecticut is... 100%, 100% absolute... It's one of the very few states that has pardons that run the way Connecticut Interesting. Does. All right, because I... I mean, I remember going on the site a few years back, and I seen that it said absolute pardon, and then there was one that said, I guess it was like a partial pardon. Well, you know what? They also do certificates of employability. Those okay. are those are the people who are on probation and parole who are deemed employable, um, and that goes through their probation or parole officer. So if you get the certificate of pardon, not that not the absolute, the the certificate one you you mentioned of employability of employability. So when you apply for a job, you still have to check off. I yes. Believe, yep. Oh, really? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So there's no real partial. It's just that you're deemed, you know, doing employable. well and employable. Yeah. Okay. So yes, yeah, so basically, yeah, like you said, you've been doing well. You have a proven track record, and all right, you know, you built a little, little trustworthiness to be right. employed by. Yeah. And me, let's say me as your probation officer, or whatever it is, yep. or the the board, they give you that. Certificate of employability. employability. Yep, but that again is initiated through the supervising agency, either probation or parole, with the client. So gotcha. Yeah, I encourage people who are doing well to ask their probation officer or their parole officer to help them with that process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the pardon process. Now, if you're if you're incarcerated, can you still apply for pardon? No. Or Oh, so you can't. So you got to be out in the community. Now. Out in the community, not supervised by probation or parole. No nollies in the last 13 months. It has to be three years since your last conviction of a misdemeanor and five years since your last conviction of a felony. Interesting. And it's the conviction date. But the conviction date. you can't date. be on supervision. All right. So you can't be on supervision. Mm -mm. So since you've been... Now, how long have you been around with your business? I, almost three years. Almost three years. Way yeah. same thing at our studio. Yeah, <laughs> We're around about the to same hit three time years. probably. Yeah. So in your three years, when you look at your ratings and your stats, um, you say you're a hundred percent, which is hundred percent, which is a good thing. So yeah. everybody has a different background, a different charge. What's the biggest charge you have seen someone be pardoned for? Um, I had someone with numerous violent domestic violence cases. Mm -hmm. Um, with immigration issues that were going to lead to some deportation. And so that was impacted. And I have somebody who had a significant robbery second 
Um, Lord, you know, we're aware that those are some serious felonies. Um, we've had some people who their um, pensions were saved. Their mm. jobs were saved. <laughs> well, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So by getting the pardon, and I've had people who were denied the first round um, and come in and got it. We got it. My, I think the rate the last time I heard, it was probably close to 70% of all um, applications, if I'm not mistaken, because the stats change year to year. Mm -hmm. But um, we've hit 100% as of this month, you know. That's awesome. So if someone... So if someone wants to, to utilize your services yeah, and let's say they don't have an income or their income is, is so low that they don't have the finances to utilize to pay for your services. I mean, are they still able to utilize you? So what we do is we do significant payment plans. And mm -hmm. what people have said to me, well, Lisa, you know, what's the payment amount? Um, I tell you that your situation is unique to you. I never tell a person how much to pay, mm -hmm. um, you know, per payment, because you may have a great week. Yep. You may have a bad week. You'll never hear about that part of it from me. Um, and we just work together until you're able to get it done. And then we submit your application. Um, but we are probably about one to two thousand dollars. I even heard up to three thousand dollars less than was being charged out there. Wow. Yeah. No, you're absolutely correct because I personally personally know no attorneys who specialize in, you know, pardons. Yeah. They charge a lot of money. Yeah. A whole lot of money. And me walking into their office, if it was me that needed it, and them giving me a quote of, you know, ten thousand. 15,000, whatever the case may be. Right, quite a bit less than that, but still yeah, it's but, high you know, but for our community. Yeah, but some people are still extremely high. Yeah, there are. Mind there you, are. I got a record. I'm struggling. Yes. You know? I yep. mean, I, I, I'm i not making $50 an hour. You know what I mean? No. Uh, so me walking into that office and getting a big quote like that will discourage me and make me want to, you know, either find another solution or, or try to do it myself, but... We are considerably less. And like I said, some people may feel that the attorney is right for them. I would never be dismissive of that mm -hmm. um, because they have, you know, they've earned their respect and respect is due and, you know, is appreciated. But I need to work with my community. And that's the other part that I felt led to kind of come into our community and go to a different price point. Um, be a person that helps people with things like payments or, you know, making some kind of arrangement for them. Um, so it, it's, it's important, you know, because mm -hmm. our community is not one of the wealthier communities in, in the area. Yeah. So you go through this whole process. Mm -hmm. You get your pardon. Yeah. I mean, life changes for, for most people who get it. Life changes. Absolutely. Life becomes a little bit better or maybe a whole lot better. Easier. Like comes be, It becomes easier. Now you have the freedom and the liberty to, to get out there and, and to sell yourself and to advance yourself, to get to get a better job or to get the yeah. dream job that you always wanted to have. Yep. That um, your record was holding you back from, from getting. Right. Um. Even just getting into some government agencies. So yeah. I have some people who are truck drivers or who are in the trades and mm -hmm. they want to go to a Sikorsky and work or, um, you know, Pratt and Whitney. Um, I have a guy who's out West and I think it's Boeing that's big out there. Mm. Can't even get on premises. The truck drivers who want to drive in the ports, you know, all of those things are, are holding people back are holding our community from taking care of their families. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. And you know what, really quick, Lisa, yeah. I want to look at uh, some of the comments that people are leaving on here. Um, Simon Cabrera is saying Lisa worked in a referral. Lisa worked in a referral of a dear friend of mine's. She did a, fa a fantastic job. I strongly recommend her services. Thank you. I'm not sure if you know who he yeah. is. Yeah. Oh no, I know who it is. Oh, okay, I you know, know who that but, is. Yeah, he was. <laughs> his referral was one of our first clients. Actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Awesome. And then um. Um, I have a, a gentleman on here named SK General. Um, I, I know him as Alfie, though. And he's asking on here, what's the waiting period? So you apply. You apply. Um, 
Right. Now, sit back and wait. How long? So there's two waiting periods, uh -huh. right? The waiting period is us getting your criminal record and submission from my office to submission. So I have people who drag their feet on getting like things like reference letters. Mm -hmm. And that is frustrating for the client, Um, you know. So that's that first, but I've had people that come in and we've gotten their stuff within a matter of weeks out. Then the Board of Pardons and Parole tell you um, on their website, give us up to a year. Uh -huh. um, I found recently that they are considerably less time than that. Um, probably lately I've been seeing about six months to the point from submission to actually getting their certificate um you know it, it just depends on the number of submissions mm -hmm. but that is what the timeline they give you and with the references one of the things i want to say is so we've had people who can't um read or write yep and they want to write a reference for a friend so i'll actually sit on the phone with them and say hey okay here answer these questions their answers become their letter. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've had people who now I uh, have a, a group that it's three people who are providing references in Spanish. They don't write in English. So we're working on those to translate them because I speak Spanish, too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those are some of the hang ups and holdbacks for some people. Yeah. Yeah. And um, let's see who else. Uh, Tony Barr is giving you a shout out. I'm not sure if you know who Tony Barr is. Yes. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> I appreciate it. And, I appreciate and Travis Gerald is saying, all right, mom. Nah, that uh, must be my that's my son. <laughs> all, all right. right to him, too. <laughs> <laughs> Dolly Villafane. Love Dolly to death. Excellent. Yes. Excellent yes. Uh, human being. She's saying you're you, you were always such a beautiful person. That's what she's saying about you right now. Maybe that's why I'm her daughter's godmother. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> but um, let's see who else. I'm just trying to catch all the uh, the comments that people are leaving out here. Wanda Flores is saying, Jason, take care of that voice. <laughs> that's your money maker. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely got it. That's, hey, that's Lola's voice, so I definitely got to take care of it. And uh, let's see who else is on here. Um, Natalia is saying, I can't wait to see you guys soon. Wow. Ah, dinner? Hey, Maybe hey, all okay. of us. <laughs> um, all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break, okay? Sounds good. All right, because you've been talking forever. So have you. <laughs> all right, guys, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back momentarily. I have not, I have Lisa, Lisa Crespo Gerald. All right, here in the studio, she is from Project Pardon LLC, which is located right here in downtown Bridgeport. Man, my throat oh, is all messed up. We'll be right back, guys. No se muevan. We'll be right back. Welcome to Spark City Smoke and Vape, located at 815 Lafayette Boulevard, Bridgeport, Connecticut. <laughs> back to welcome welcome back to super elite entertainment again i'm your host jason rodriguez broadcasting from i'm gonna say it like it is the best broadcasting studio right here in downtown bridgeport <laughs> and then lisa's sitting next to me she's like eh, i don't know about that you got hanu kumbara underneath you hey hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so one more second we're gonna keep talking Mama. about the pardon process so you know what let's let's so where, where do you where, where do you originate from? Bridgeport. Bridgeport. What school systems you went to? I was actually sent to the Catholic school system. Blessed Sacrament. Hey, on Stratford Avenue absolutely. on Union Ave. Yep. Um, St. Ambrose a little bit. And then I got shipped off out to school for high school. What high school? St. Joe's. Oh, so you, okay. So you went to Go the... Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> we don't always fit in okay, but we're doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's good. That's good. Uh, congratulations yeah. that you were Thank able you. to go to um, those those types of schools and have that type of opportunity. I think that's a great thing. And that's why... It's a lot of sacrifice. What college did you went to? University of Connecticut 
and I got my master's from University of St. Joseph's out in um, in uh, West Hartford. Wow. And, you know, while you were talking earlier, I was looking at you because you retired from the state. Yeah. I mean, when did you start working for the state? When, when you were I like 12. When you, yeah, when you were like eight? No, you're doing better than me. I said 12. Yeah, because. You're young. Yeah, no, young. You, you, I mean. Right you, out you of look, college about a year after. Really? I okay, got really so you started blessed. really young. And you retired young, basically. 44? 40. That's a beautiful thing. 44. That's a beautiful <laughs> thing. I'm telling you, man. And you know what? If people are watching, if you ever have an opportunity to, to join, for example, if you ever have an opportunity to get a state job, join corrections, you know, 20 in, 20 out. Now it's, it's different. 25. Though. It's 25 now. But it's hazardous duty that it is gets hazardous you doozy. to those 25. Yeah. It's a doozy, all right. You yeah. said doozy. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's hazardous duty. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, being able to retire at 44, yeah. that is insane. Yeah. That's like unheard of. Yeah. You know? I know someone who retired at 42. Yeah. yeah. But all again, all law enforcement, probation, parole, police, uh -huh. fire. So, you know, it does, it, it, it can be wearing on the spirit, but it's very rewarding. And so it is what it is. let me ask you a question. Yeah. Um, getting a pardon, getting that absolute pardon that just clears your entire record. Um, once you get that certificate, or not even the certificate, it's once a certificate. It, You'll end up with a certificate. So, but what you get for you first? You get a letter sent to you by mail, right? Um, I, they usually email you a letter you? congratulating you, and it's provisional, mm -hmm. um, meaning that they need to go ahead and double check your records, make sure everything is right, make sure you don't get arrested in between. Ah. Um, you know, to make sure that they'll get that certificate to you once they absolutely can run your record Do and another nothing background check. comes up. So once you got that certificate, it's a done deal. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. You don't got no wrap. So now, now you can make some power moves, right? You can do certain little things. So, so oh, my God, I lost my train of thought. So my question was, once, dear Lord, it'll come back to me. It'll come back to me. Okay. But, so, my God, it was a good question, though. It was a good question. I'm sure you have another one. Don't worry about it. You no, no, loaded no, but with I don't, that I don't want to jump to the next one because that was a really good question. I just lost my train of thought. Um, oh, my God. That's terrible. Certificate. It, it happens. Yeah, so you get your certificate. So, all right, so let, let's say you get your certificate. <clears throat> and, and I, I'm sure that question will come back to me. Um, if you lose it, what happens? You can request another one. You can request another yeah. one. Yeah. Does the record's not coming back okay, if you lost is, your certificate? Is, okay, the question just came back. This is the question. You got your certificate. So now can you just jump out there and start applying for whatever you want? Or should you maybe go and do a full background check on yourself to verify that nothing still exists? Um, I will tell you that there's two, there's a difference between a background check with a private company. Uh-huh and law enforcement records. A pardon is strictly for all your official law enforcement records. Sometimes you have these companies that'll say, oh, buy so-and-so's record for, you know, $39.99. Yeah. But the thing that you need to understand is that sometimes they don't update their records. Um, I've seen where a person says, oh, well, you know, you have a record. They're like, no, I don't. You've been arrested. Once you have that certificate, no, I haven't. Uh -huh. um, so you can, in the background, um, send your certificate of pardon to that company and they have to erase it. But they're pretty good about clearing it. Um, you know, newspapers may still have stuff. Those types of things are not covered by your absolute pardon. Yeah. All right. So when we look at your organization, Project Pardon, LLC, mm -hmm. what kind of services do you provide besides... The pardon process, like, as I noticed on your on your website, matter of fact, I'm going to put a couple of things up on, on the screen right now so people can see it. Um, Project Pardon, your website is right there, www.projectpardonllc.com. Um, if, they, if they go onto your website, people can see all the different types of services that you provide. Right there says our services, quality yep. pardon applications, informational workshops, applic uh, applicant support, creative improvement plans affordability, our workshops. So that's the thing that I wanted to point out is that you offer workshops. Yeah. So talk about that a little bit. So what we have, especially now coming up, is workshops where we kind of group talk about what is um, 
what it's like to have this process, mm -hmm. go through the process. Um, we talk about what it's like to go through hearings. We talk about, you know, what you can do. I did a, a workshop at Greater Bridgeport OIC, and it was about living as though you're getting your pardon today uh. or tomorrow. Um, you know, some people go through these two, three, four years and they do nothing. And then all of a sudden they want to pardon. Well, what have you done? And so there's some work to do. Yeah. And, you know, when we talk about creative planning, um, that's a skill set learned within judicial. Right. And so you sit with somebody, you know that there's some mm. things going on and you plug them into the community. Um, one individual had a lot of trauma. Um, so I just said, hey, let's make sure that's in a good place. I made some referrals. I sent them on. I said, not mandatory, but hey, why don't you go see this person, see how that works out? Because that's something else that you have to improve yeah. your quality of life. Um, some people was just like, do some community service. So coming up with some plans. Um, you know what? You know, I, I, love, I love that you brought that whole subject idea up because it's important for people, like you just said, to do something, you got to put some work in. Yeah. You just can't wake up and say, I want a pardon. But, you know, for the last eight years you've been out, you haven't had a job. No job, chilling, feet up. Yeah, feet up. <laughs> I mean, you didn't, you didn't attend any workshops, any any groups, any anything where you was able to, you know, accumulate some certificates showing mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. you know, man, listen, I, I, I took my freedom serious. Right. You know, I educated myself. I have certificates. I have letters of recommendation from different people, whether yeah. from politicians or whatever the case may be. So, yeah, like you said, you got to put some work in. Yeah. You just ain't going to get it. You got to put some work in. And I encourage people to really, when they're working for their references, I tell people, be true to who you are and who you connect with. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to be a person that says, go out and get a pardon letter from anybody you know, we joke about the power moves, you know. Yep. Um, and there are some people who have great relationships with the leaders in their community. Are they genuine, mm -hmm. like one-on-one -on -one things? And those are the ones that I like to see references from. Yeah. Um, you know, you know me. You know how I've changed. We've connected. Um, only one can be from a family member by a marriage or um, blood relative. So make good connections out there. Absolutely. So... You know, guys, I mean, if you're one of those who've been through the system and you're already, uh, you know, past that mark, that waiting period that you have to wait in order to apply, if you've been active in the community, involved in, you know, any type of community activity, shelters, whatever the case may be, um, out there just living a stand-up ethical lifestyle and just doing things the right way, I mean, I, I highly recommend and encourage you to pursue your part and apply for it. Absolutely. And, you know, Lisa is right here. You can reach out to her. Matter of fact, Lisa, I want to put your information on the screen so people can see it. Because I, I want people that. to be able to call your number, 203-416-6392. Or they can visit www.projectpardonllc.com. All the information is right on your website. And, you know, if you call that number, guys, I guarantee you there's a possibility you might even, even answer the phone yourself. I usually do. Mm -hmm. um, myself, I have an intern also who's um, amazing. I love her. Uh -huh. Love her, love her, love her. Would like to um, get to the point where we can keep her on board full time. Yeah. Um, but when we do really do get busy with these um, clients and cases, um, I also utilize other retired probation officers who are strong in the industry. Mm. You know, well versed, know how to do it, and care. And that's and that's what it's all about. And that's what it's all about. You know, I like what um someone just said on here. Um, Travis Gerald says everyone deserves a second chance and an opportunity to live free. Project Pardon definitely helps you get that chance one hundred percent. Can't say it better than I couldn't say it better than that. That's that's on the money right there. Yeah. Everybody deserves a second chance. You know, sometimes, and, uh, sometimes a third chance. Maybe. You know. Maybe a fifth chance. Maybe Look at the gentleman fifth. that went five times. Yeah. Yeah. You that know? one was impressive to see the emotion and, you know. Like, I got it. Yeah. I made it. Yep. I mean, I can't even imagine that that liberating feeling that person must have felt knowing that um, this, this bondage has been broken. Now it's all over. And now I'm ready to rock out and make some things happen for myself. Yeah. Somebody no. just said they wanted the pride in, of their reputation back. Mm. And I'm like, wow. 
I no longer live by my street name. I live by my given name, the name given to me by my parents wow. with pride. And I was like, that's a powerful thing. That is. To say. That is. Yeah. And you know what? I just wanted to point out something. So I don't know if the part of process is still this way. Because I remember back then um, when you applied, you had to go to the courthouse on a scheduled date. You would have to go in front of a panel of people, of judges. Let me not say people, of no, judges. No, they're actually people in, in different industries. They're not judges. They're not judges anymore. Interesting. Okay. So yeah. you had to go and stand in front of them, and basically you had to indicate why you wanted a pardon, and you had to sell yourself out to these people. Yeah. So you had to come correct. Yeah. You, had to, you had to do your homework and, and, and walk into that environment ready. So I don't know if it's still like that, but... You know, I'm just I'm just thinking about an incident where I I I happen to be there. You know, as a marshal in the courthouse. Yep. So I was I was observing some hearings, and one and, and I'm just saying this so that if you're watching, if you ever applied and go in front of the panel, don't do this. This gentleman went up there and said, they asked him, "Why do you want to apply for a pardon?" He said, "Well, the reason why I apply for a pardon is because." I want to be able to go hunting, and I want to get my, my gun permit back so I can get some guns and be able to go hunting and be able to do what I enjoy doing. As soon as he opened his mouth, I said, he's getting denied. He's getting denied. And what do you think happened? He got denied. He was denied right off the rip. Matter of fact, they cut him off. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll get back to you within a couple of days. So don't do that. No, don't do that at all. <laughs> but, you know, one of the things that we do and being coming from my background, right, uh -huh. we learn things like client engagement, which is how to engage with people, M motivational interviewing, uh -huh. how, what motivates you to change, what motivates you to move forward in all different areas of your life. Um, and so we use those skills in my office. That's why I reach out to retired probation officers who are trained um, the same way I was. Either yeah. I was their chief or I think all of them I was their chief. But no, but they're they're just amazing at what they do. Yeah. And we actually sit with people, which was is what other people don't do. Mm. We sit between three to five hours per client and sometimes more if they need it. Wow. To develop these answers that are strong. And I always tell people this shouldn't be just the answer for paper. It should be your testimony. Absolutely. And once is your personal testimony, it's it's a rock and answer and you can get up there and the nice thing is right now unfortunately it's covid but zoom yeah. is the way they're being done and you have people from probation um parole federal um pro parole i think it is um they're from all different industries mental health so it's yeah. you know a good group of people that are working on that board yeah no so you know definitely guys um, if you're in need of a pardon, I highly recommend that you reach out, reach out to Lisa and, um, you know, make that contact with Project Pardon. They're right here in Bridgeport. And you don't only, you don't only serve Bridgeport. You serve no, the, whole state. the whole state of Connecticut. Yep. You know, so if someone can't get down here to see you in person, I'm sure you can do like a Zoom. We do Zoom. I've driven up and met people mm -hmm. to um, pretty much, I think, almost in Hartford. Yep. Um, you know, we're... As we grow, we'll see how far things, you know, go. But, yep, the whole state of Connecticut. Wow. I've gotten questions about other states. No, I don't do those right now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, so we take we take we take care of our own way. state first. Connecticut, Bridgeport, <laughs> Connecticut, Harper, New Haven. Let's yep. do them all. Waterbury. That's right. That's right. You know, London. Um, one of the things that I did want to mm. mention because yep. we talked about attorney, we talked about what you get. You know, our time. There are people out there who. Just straight up saying, oh, I'll do a pardon for 500 bucks. Uh -huh. I'll do a pardon for whatever. And really, you're doing all the work. There's You have to ask what's the skill set in terms of assessing their situation, helping them really build and develop their answers. Um, you know, So ask what you're getting mm -hmm. for what you're investing. Because you know, there may be somebody who's great at it, but question it. Absolutely. And no, I agree with you and 100%. The quality. I agree with you 110%. And no disrespect, no disrespect no, not at to, all. and I'm going to say this, you know, no disrespect to the jailhouse, jailhouse lawyers also. Yeah. Because there's a lot of inmates who, super while, smart. Yeah, they're super smart, but, you know, they get out and, 
you know, they, you're not really, I, I don't, I don't want to speak negative of, of anyone, but no. I mean, I'm going to go and hire someone with experience, someone that's, that's been there and done that. Someone who, who has a, a proven track record, who, who has that proof in the pudding that, you know, will be able to provide me a service that there's a great, I mean, if anything, there's a 90% possibility guaranteed that I might get my pardon. Then someone who just got out of jail, who was a jailhouse lawyer, who says I can do your pardon for two hundred and fifty dollars. I've seen it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I've seen it. And I've also seen like the faith-based community really help people too, uh -huh. and like really do a good job of it. So I'm not dismissive of that either. I just make sure you question: what are your, what's your track record? What am I getting? Um, tell me what you know about it. Be sure that it's a quality interview time invested in you because this is it's a huge decision absolutely and it's life-changing absolutely and you know i like a comment out here that janice tavaris just put she said um this is important work thank you for being a pillar of hope for so many i appreciate that yeah god is good all, all the time long. all the time god is mm -hmm. good don't make me preach no but wait a minute it's funny because our <laughs> tagline is that you cannot conquer what you do not confront and that actually came from actually, you're right, it's right yeah here. it's right there it's and right that here, actually man. came from pastor eric torres he was preaching one day at greater bridgeport christian fellowship and ah love pastor um and i was like that's it that is what i'm talking about and it's all over all my stuff so i want a little shout out to pastor eric torres because yeah. it was what he ministered that really spoke to what is happening with us you cannot conquer what you do not confront that's powerful that stuff. is powerful that's powerful <laughs> that is powerful stuff. thanks pastor eric <laughs> <laughs> and i appreciate the um the little wristband that i was given yeah my little gift hey if you come here as a guest bring me a gift <laughs> yeah right <laughs> no but i appreciate that so what we're gonna do now we're gonna take a quick break all right and Thank then when you. i come back because we're starting to wind down in the show i'm gonna hit you off with the shotgun questions all right. Oh, Lord. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> so I hope you guys are having a good time. I hope uh, this interview tonight has been informative. I hope that, um, you know, it's helpful and that you're able to, to gain some some understanding and some knowledge of, of you know, of, of how you can go about uh, getting a pardon if you need one or if you know someone that needs a pardon. I encourage you to encourage you to have them reach out to Lisa and um you know make, make some arrangements to, to set up an appointment to get down there so that you can get what you need all right guys we're gonna take a quick break we'll be right back momentarily and my voice is still shot i'll be right back hi welcome to aces bail bonds uh -huh. <laughs> Do you need information regarding bail bonds and the bail bond process? Contact us at ACES Bail Bonds, where we are happy to give you a free bail consultation. You are in capable hands with our reputable agency. For fast, reliable bail bond service, get out of jail fast with ACES Bail Bonds. You can save time and money by calling ahead. We'll have the forms ready for you, with everything handled privately, discreetly, and confidentially at our office. For fast, reliable bail bond service, call Ace's Bail Bonds now. Welcome to Ramirez Restaurant. All right, I know you know how to dance. I know you know I how to dance. Am yeah. No. Yeah, you know how to dance. I understand. No. Listen, I understand you go to church, and, and the spirit of God moves in you. <laughs> and I'm being told to drink some ginger and tea. I'll do that after work. Well, after nope. yeah, this is work. I'll do that after the show. But um, you no. ready? No, absolutely not. <laughs> Come on, throw it up, throw it up. Hey, hey, hey. You know my kids ay, are embarrassed ay, right ay, now. Hey, right? your kids are embarrassed right now? All right, but you're doing this for the spirit, for the spirit. 
hey, there? hey, hey, there you go. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back to Live with Jason Rodriguez. We're broadcasting on the Super Elite Entertainment Network. I have Miss Lisa Vargas. You're funny. <laughs> no, Miss Lisa. Lisa what? Crespo Gerald. Miss, yeah, something like that. I've just been messing up your name all day. I think you're doing it to tease me. <laughs> He's been giving me a hard time all day. Calling me by the name of people who we actually know. To That's right. Mutually, and then laughing about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we have Miss Lisa here. And uh, we've been talking about the uh, parting process. Been having a good time. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. 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 You came ready. You came very informed, well-versed, well-spoken. And I guarantee you that the people that are watching have gained a great um, amount of knowledge of what needs to be done. So, people, somebody's going to be calling you tomorrow. They're going to call you tonight. They're going to leave you messages. Prayers. Talking about, hey, girl, I, I, I need a pardon. Absolutely. Let's <laughs> do it. All right, guys. So, shotgun questions. You ready? Let's try it. All right. Here we we'll go. do the best we can. Okay. Here we go. Simple questions I ask each and every guest who come on the show. These are questions that are more intimate. Allows people to, you know, to know it's the little annoying. personal side. Yeah. All right. So here we go. What's your favorite song? Anything by Mark Anthony. Hey. Okay. I need to know. I need to know. What's the next one? Let's roll. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love Mark Anthony. I've seen him live six times in concert. I've seen and, him a couple um, times. Yeah, but his tickets are a little up there right now. So mm -hmm. I'm going to pass unless somebody bless me with a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite movie? The Notebook. That's and a good Forrest one. Gump. Forrest Gump is a good movie. I love Forrest. The Notebook is a good movie as well. Make you cry. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good one. All right. All right. Favorite food? We like to eat over here. Lobster. Oh. <laughs> okay. Red lobster? No. Oh, so you. The chowder pot. <laughs> <laughs> she said, no, no red lobster for me. All right. Uh, what's your favorite sport? It better be baseball in my uh -huh. house. Uh-huh. And you better say the right team. Please say the right team. What's Yankees. the team? Let's go, Yankees. Bluefish travel. Hey, my buddy Bagan. Yep. And yep. my buddy, my son, he coaches over there, too. Oh, that's right. That's yep. right. He worked. Yep. They're doing a good thing. I like, I like that whole setup that they have. They got a nice one. Yeah. On. No doubt about it. All right. So let's keep going. Favorite car? I want my Toyota Sequoia back. Your Toyota Sequoia? Sequoia. You, what, what do you mean you want it back? I used to have one. I need a new one. So what, 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 what's, what you driving now? A RAV. A Pinto? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Yugo. A Yugo. Wow. Remember those? Flip it on its side. Yeah, flip it. One person could just go boom. <laughs> Flipping no, on his you. side of you go. Uh, what was it they used to say back in the day? You go, I don't go. I, I forgot that little quote they used to have with I the Yugos. But yeah, those were, yeah. how much were those brand new? Like 3000 I don't know. Yeah. All right. Um, favorite thing you like to read? You don't want to know. Yeah, say it. Police reports. <laughs> you know what? That's That's a good thing. Yeah, my industry, it is. Yeah. And you really get to know a person and you get to sympathize and know about your victims yeah and yeah it I like changes to... you but it helps you yeah i agree i like to read those too i like to read them, especially good police reports you know yeah and good investigations yeah um favorite thing you like to do scrapbook 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 so what exactly are you scrapping pictures of my kids um joining my daughter in her um, community service project for incubators at the NICU. So, oh, little name tags. Okay. And I think you said she danced for Latin Rhythm, right? Latin Rhythms, yeah. Hey, we're giving you a plug in Latin Rhythm. Yep. Still in Stratford, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep. Latin Rhythm. Over there with Rosa. Rosa Flores. Flores, yeah. Yep. Yep. And Jonathan. John, yeah, that's right. That's right. Nice place. They get down. I've been over there a few times. Yeah. They throw down. Um, what's your favorite word you like to use? One word. One word you like to use? Bleep. No, I'm oh, oh, oh. Yeah, no, I, I got my butt. I got my finger on the button right here to no, bleep it real no. quick. One word. Caramba. No. 
Carajo. No. Is that a bad word in Spanish? Hell. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'll pass. <laughs> Uh oh, no. Okay, she, she doesn't have a favorite word. All right, no, I have a little favorite phrase. What's that? Are you kidding me? I know, right? That's yeah. When my <laughs> kids hear it, they know they run. No, I'm only kidding. They, yeah. Well, you you know, you was a probation officer for what? Twenty years? How many years? Twenty two almost. Twenty two years. So you were. Oh. Some days. Some days. Why Lay not? down the law. Some days you're gonna get me talking at home. You know all the time. No. Uh huh. Walk in the house. Fuego. <laughs> um. What sound? Go ahead. <laughs> no, I was gonna say you know from firsthand experience. So cut it out. You know? <laughs> what sound of noise do you love to hear the most? Honestly, the sound of rainwater hitting a corrugated roof, um, in Puerto Rico as a kid. Cool. I would have never expected anyone to say that, but that's pretty pretty cool. Interesting. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Do you love it as much as I do? I do. I can't wait. I want to buy a house there. I'll be your neighbor. But my house has to be in Condado. Condado is no, very expensive. True. Yeah. Maybe Cagua, where all my family are at. You know? No, no, no. I definitely a beach girl, so I got to yeah. be near the water. Got to be near the water. So Cagua, you're near the water. Yep. It's what, like 20, maybe a 20 minute drive My to the beach. My family lives near Crash Bowl in Aguadilla. So. Aguadilla. Yeah, we, we all, all might right. end up out there. All right, let's keep going. All right. All right. Um, other than your current profession, if Lisa Crespo, Gerald, was able to do it all over again, what would you do? If I couldn't do what I did, I if would be a nurse. If you can't do what you did, oh, really? I would be a nurse. I could see that. I can see that. I was I was in a nursing program. Oh really? Yeah. It's to be not an RN? what I called with yeah, but not what I was called to do. Wow. And then you just you change your major? Something like that. Something like that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Big shout out to all the nurses that are watching right That's now. That's right. Hey. All right. And then um all right, so here's the last question I have for you. It's a good one. You should be able to answer this. Let's see. Uh, very fervently, without a problem. So, if heaven really exists, when Lisa arrives at the pearly gates, what do you want to hear God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit say to you when you arrive there? What do you want, want to hear God's voice say to you? Well done, Lisa. Well done. Well done, my good and faithful servant. That's you're gonna hear that. Right. I know you're gonna hear that. Mom, I'm praying. <laughs> I have my days, but I'm praying. Well, I think we, I think we all have our days. Absolutely, we all have our days. But um, yeah, we come to the conclusion of the show. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate. It. I really appreciate everybody just watching and share with someone. Share with someone. Yeah. So it's really quick changing. before we go, before we go, uh, Lisa, your final words to the viewing audience right now. A couple of quick words you want to you want to leave them with. Again, you cannot conquer what you do not confront. You know, take a step from faith. Take a step forward. Find out if you're eligible for this. Um, there is no telling what, how your life can change or how the life of a loved one can change because it changes a village. Um, it changes your family. It changes your outlook. So it's not just about you. Well said, my good and faithful servant. Well said. I think you did an outstanding job, and Thank I truly you. appreciate the opportunity of having you come down to the studio and being a part of the weekly show that I do. I appreciate it. Been doing this for almost three years now. Every Tuesday nights, we're here live. It used to be at 7, now it's at 8 o'clock. I mean, you know, this is what we do. Thank you, and Gio. Yeah, yeah. And I love, I love interviewing influential people from our state, from our city, from our town, from our area. And that's what you are. And the other thing that I love... And, and I don't get too many of this too often is being able to interview a female and especially a Latina female. So, you know, I look Thank at you, you as a woman, a woman of empowerment and I'm impressed by your, your level of expertise and your accomplishments. Thank you. And um, yeah, so, you know, I, I, I'm grateful for the opportunity. Thanks. Thank you. Lisa Vargas? No. You're Lisa, so funny. Lisa Crespo Jira. 
That's the one. Let me stop. I, I know your name. I'm just okay. joking with you. <laughs> but thank you so much. All right. All right. Y que Dios te bendiga. Y a ti también. Y lo, <laughs> y lo fuimos. All right, guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed yourself. I had a blast. I don't know about you. Lisa came in here very informed. She tore it apart. And she threw out a lot of information, guys. So what I want to do really quick right now, we, before we go, I just want to put her information on the screen one more time. Her phone number is 203-416-6392. Or you can visit www.projectpardonllc.com if you want some more information. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, you were we about to say something? too. Oh, you take text messages too? Yep. So they could text that phone number on the screen? Yep. All right, so send her a text right now. Send her a text right now. Let's blow her fo her phone off the hook. All right? Blow her phone off the hook. If you know someone that needs to be in contact with her, text her. Send her that person's information. Send her that person's name. Lisa's going to be on her grind tomorrow, reaching out to all of you who sent her a text tonight. All right, guys? With that said, I'm out of here. I got to go and get me a nice hot tea with some. Someone said in the in the chat, uh, ginger and lemon. Think that'll work? Maybe. Or, you know, my grandmother, she used to make what was called enjibre. You remember that? Enjibre is ginger. Oh, that is ginger. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. I don't know. I don't, yeah. So, ginger is enjibre. Mm -hmm. So, she would boil that and she would just. Yeah, give you a tea. Yeah. Okay. I didn't even. Okay. The ginger person was right. Yeah, the ginger person was right then. Enjibre it is. Where can I get some enjibre of that? Maybe My stop refrigerator. Show. Your refrigerator? <laughs> we do. We have some. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm out of here. I hope to see you guys next week, next Tuesday night at 8 p.m. I'm going to be broadcasting right here from our studio. I have another amazing guest. You know what's crazy? I have another woman, a female, who's joining me next Tuesday night. All right. Her name is Jazz. Uh, uh, yeah, Jasmine. Jasmine. She's going to be uh, joining me. She's a professional baker. She makes serious high-end cakes. And, I'm coming and, for a slice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she better bring me a little slice of cake. But she'll be here in the studio with me next Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. We're going to come at you live from right here in the city of Bridgeport. I'm out of here, guys. Take care. God bless. And um, we hope to be able to do this again next week. Thank you so much for all the shares, for all the likes. Thank you for watching. Thank you, um, you know, all you guys for leaving all the comments. Natalia, I see it on here. She is saying, as always, a great show. Lisa, you're amazing. She says, um, Janice Tavares is saying, such an informative and impactful interview. Juan, uh, I mean, Anna Cecilia is saying, Wanda Flores, Soda, my family, is from Caguas. She's letting you know that hey, I'm from Caguas. What are you talking about? And who else? Let's see who else is on here leaving comments. Um, all right, so Wanda is saying she's from Caguas, Caguas. Wow, everybody started going crazy. Wanda Flores is saying, yes, that's my favorite sound. Your sound that the she's that you said. Yeah, the water. Uh, Tracy Gonzalez is saying, inspired by this great lady and her awesome drive to support her community and better and to better everyone she meets. Um, not sure if you know her. Anna Cecilia is saying, yes, the chatter pot. That's what I'm talking about. Go, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a double lobster roll. Hey, and Wanda is telling me, drink some, some ginger and some lemon tea. I'm going to do that as soon as I get out of here. Um, but also, Wanda Flores is saying, great work that you are doing. The Lord definitely has guided you to your calling to continue to help people um, to get a second chance. And then Travis Gerald is saying, Thank you for the great work you are doing in our community and helping people to get new opportunities. With that said, congratulations, Lisa. Thank you for the opportunity Thank to you. be able to interview you, interview you in, like I say, every week. Lo fuimos. We're out of here, guys. Have a good night.